Here we're going to look at question 27 from section 2 of the BMAT 2014 paper. So in this question we're told we have a crane which is lifting a 20 kilogram mass um, and the height that the mass is at at a time um, is given by our graph here. So for example on our graph we see that it starts at a height of 0, moves to a height of 10 meters after 25 seconds and is at a height of 20 meters after 50 seconds. Um, we're also told to note that the um, gravitational field strength, g, is just equal to 10 newtons per kilogram, and the question asks us what is the power output of the crane at um, a height h of 10 metres. So if you'd like to have a go at this question yourself, then please pause the video now, um, otherwise let's get on. To try and answer our question, let's think about the power of, oh, let's think about the power um, and any equations which we can think of which might relate it to some of the variables we've been given. Um, now this question initially looks quite tricky because actually we've not really been given very many variables. Uh, we've been given sort of height and time um, and a g for some reason as well as a mass and then we've randomly been asked about power which is perhaps not what we do expect to be asked about. Um, but if we think about some equations of power you might come up with the equation that p equals fv. The power um, being applied to something is equal to the force applied to something and multiplied by the velocity of the of the object. So let's see how that applies in this case. Um, well first of all let's try and think about the velocity um, that our, our mass is moving at at a height of 10 meters. Well what actually is velocity? It's a distance divided by a time. Um, so if we look at our graph then we have a height going up on the y-axis and a time going across on the x-axis. So actually um, then the gradient of our graph is going to be a distance divided by time. It's our height divided by our time. So the velocity um, of our mass, of 10, uh, 20 kilograms, sorry, is just going to be the gradient of the graph at a point. So we can consider the gradient um, at a height of 10 meters, and we can see that actually at this point the graph is pretty straight. Um, so the gradient is quite easy to read off, um, and if we do it on the real graph rather than my sketch here, we see that it comes out to be 0 0.5 meters per second. Um, so now that we've got the velocity sorted for our power equation, let's think about the force actually acting on our mass. Um, so to think about the force, let's draw a diagram of what's actually going on, just because it generally makes things a bit easier. Um, so we have our 20 kilogram mass, and it's going at this velocity v at some point, um, at specifically 0 0.5 meters per second at a height of 10 meters. And we have this force pulling it upwards, which is the force due to the crane, and it's the force in our equation p, uh, p equals fv. And then in the downwards direction, we have the weight of 20 uh, g. So from this, we can try and work out what um, the force upwards f is actually going to be. And now to do this, um, we can actually think about the fact that our, for our graph is straight at h, uh, h equals 10 meters. So what that means is that the velocity is constant. Now, um, on the real graph, there is actually a portion of the, um, um, of the graph which is quite a straight line, there's no curve to it really at all. So at a height of 10 meters, we know that the velocity is a constant um, for this period of the graph here. Um, and what that means is that there's actually no acceleration of our mass whatsoever. And so, uh, by Newton's second law, we know that the total force is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration. And the total force is just going to be this force F take away our 20 G, our weight. And that's going to be equal to 20 times by our acceleration, which since it's just zero, gives us um, that the force um, pulling the weight up, or the mass up, is just going to be equal to the weight, 20 g. So now that we have the velocity of 0 0.5 meters per second and a force of 20 g, we can substitute these back into our equation for power to find our final answer. Moving on to a new page, we can do this, um, and, and multiplying sorry, 20 g um, by 0 0.5, or 0 0.5 meters per second, we find that that taking g to be 100 gives us 200 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is of course just 100, 100 watts being our power. Um, and this is of course our final answer and corresponds to answer D given in the question.